So what else can we do to improve the performance of the algorithm so far? Let's go back to this picture. We took care of the region proposals. We took care of warping. We are sharing a lot of computations in our CNNs. We got rid of these uh, pair class support vector machines. What else can we do to improve the performance? We can go here and we see that there are some computations here that probably we can save. And there, there are actually more computations here. These are fully connected networks in your faster CNN. And it would be good to share computations even after, even after these convolutional feature maps in this gray box. We know that most of the computations are shared and only one image goes in, but then you're gonna have multiple uh, regions of interest that you are then pulling, pushing them through convolutions and then getting your softmax and bounding boxes. But it would be good if we could share computations here. But there is a problem. There is a dilemma. And the dilemma is that in image classification, we are looking for translation invariance. Uh, but in object detection, translation matters. So it's gonna be translation variance because that object could be located in different parts of your image. And if you shift your image a little bit and you're still using the old bounding boxes, you're making error. So the idea is that you want to replace the fully connected networks with convolutional networks because that's gonna be much faster. But then there is a problem because convolutional net neural networks are translation invariant. So to fix that problem, you can have position sensitive score maps. You're gonna have a posi position sen sensitive score maps because you want to be sensitive to translation, to the position in your image. You have a convolution, it's gonna give you a bunch of feature maps. You take those feature maps, you're gonna have a convolution that's gonna increase the size of your feature map to be k squared by c plus one. C is the number of classes. One is the background and k is the size of your uh, ROI pooling. And that's gonna output this, that the entire thing. But then you're gonna interpret each part differently. You're gonna interpret this yellow part as top left then top center so that one is going to correspond to top left, top center, uh, and this one is bottom right. And each one is color coded appropriately. What you're going to do is when you're doing your pooling, you only pull from the features that you associated with top left. So you're only going to pull here and put your values here. And then in the end, there is going to be a voting and then there is going to be a softmax giving you the classes. There is no need for a fully connected network. So yeah, these are score maps. They are coming out of your feature map, out of a convolution, okay? And we are focusing only on the fast RCNN part of our network. We know that there is gonna be a region proposal network that proposing regions for the detection network, but that part is what we just covered in the previous paper. So that part is the same as before. The contributions are here. You want them to be, you want your convolutions to be position sensitive, to be sensitive to the object being on the top left. And these are relative positions, relatively on the top left, relatively speaking on the top center, et cetera. So let's be a little bit more precise about what's happening mathematically. You can divide each of your regions of interest into K by K bins. For instance, you can have three by three bins. Now, if your region of interest has size W by H, each one of your bins is gonna be of size W by K and H by K. Now, what you need to know is the pooled response in the IJ bin for the seed category. So what you want to know is the response in the IJ bin for one of these slices, for one of the C categories. And we know that you're gonna have K squared times C plus one position sensitive score maps. And you can, each element of that is gonna be Z, I, J, and C for that particular class. And let's say X zero, Y zero is the top left corner. N is the number of pixels in each bin. Then you can actually know what is the X, Y coordinates of the I, J bin. And that's gonna give you X, that's gonna give you the Y coordinate. Each one is gonna have a size of W divided by K for X. And the other one is gonna have a step size of H over K. 
and all of these X and Y's are gonna be within that bin. Now here is the key to translating this figure, their response at the I, J bin for class C is gonna be the summation of all of the pixels within that bin and they are coming from your position sensitive score maps. And that's why X0 and Y0 matter because it's gonna give you the top left corner that you're gonna start with. And then you're gonna divide it by N because it's average pooling. And that's how you get your uh, responses. What you can do now is you vote. How do you vote? You just uh, average them out or you can take the maximum. So these are position sensitive scores. And in the end, you're gonna have a soft max predicting your classes. So is everything clear? The entire idea was you wanted to replace your fully connected networks with convolutions because they are more efficient. But the problem with convolutions was that they are translation invariant and you want to make them sensitive to the position. You want to make them somehow translation variant and that's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna say it matters to me whether we are on the top left corner of our feature map in the region of interest or top center corner, etc. So all that's happening is that uh, you're pulling per each sub block of your channels here. And then you're just putting them, putting those values here. Any questions? So could you <coughs> repeat that last thing you just said? Cause it seems sort of just like a, a max pooling. I'm struggling to see the, the differences. So no, it's not a max pooling. It's uh, an average pooling. Or an average pooling, yeah. Happening. So your average pooling only on the part that corresponds to the features color coded by this yellow or this blue color, dark blue color. Oh, so it's like a it's like an average pulling over the channels instead of the the spatial dimension. No, it's actually the spatial dimension. It's X and Y within that B. But it's channel specific. See, what do you need in the end? You're gonna need C is gonna count numbers from one up until C plus one. So it's gonna do the slices of this feature map for you. And these are actually called responses. So you are doing uh, C of those, C plus one of those. That's what C is counting. Then you, know, then you need to know what value you're putting inside each one of these bins. What is the I, J entry of this? What is the first and first? What is the first and second? What is the first and the last? What value are, going, are you gonna put on the top left of this? And the value that you're getting, it's gonna be a single value and it's gonna come out of doing an average over these score maps. And the yellow ones are coming from doing an average on the yellow um, slices of your position sensitive score map. So there is a single value per each channel, per each uh, corner or per each bin. And that's how you get it. So is this clear now? Yeah, thank you. And once you get these nine numbers, in the end, you want to have a single number to push through your softmax. And then these guys are gonna vote. You can, for instance, add them up. And the one that's dominating is gonna give you more contribution to your softmax. It means that the positions matter now. And how do you take care of the bounding boxes? It's the same, it's the same as before. In the end, you're gonna end up with some numbers, but then you need four of them times K squared because you need K squared of them and there is four coordinates for each bounding box. And then you can do a bounding box regression. So these bounding boxes are also position sensitive. For instance, in this case, you're gonna have nine of them times four coordinates, and that's gonna be the output in the end. And how does it compare? Now you can see the difference between faster RCNN and RFCNN. We know that for this one, I need to go back to this figure. The depth of this network and the amount of computation that you are not sharing when you're using faster RCNN is 10. With RFCNN, you don't need to do any non-shared operations. And that's gonna save you both in training time and in testing time. And it's gonna give you slightly better accuracy. Not accuracy, mean average over, mean average precision. And then you can also play around with the number of region of interest. And this goes back to the question that we had on the previous paper about how many region of interest this network is gonna to propose to us and how that's gonna affect the accuracy. You see that uh, going to 2000 region of interest is not even possible 
for faster RCNNs. Too computationally expensive. But at least here you are getting some results. And apparently it's not helping that much. Apparently going 300 region of interest was enough. But the more important fact is the training. The training and te testing time. You are saving a lot of computations. And you are finishing right on time. For those of you who have questions, you're more than welcome to stay and ask. I'll be around. And the ones who want to leave, they can leave. Thank you.